tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, transcribed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are running through the alleys of a Mediterranean village, the blackness of the Italian night confusing you, while somewhere in the dark behind you, coming closer as they search for you, are a man and a beautiful woman who mean to take your life. Listen now as Escape brings you Kathleen Height's story, An Ordinary Man. I don't know yet why I said it. But later, as I stood at the deck rail and felt the light chill of the Mediterranean night, I decided it was a good thing. I was 40 years old. In all my 40 years, people had never looked at me the way they had in the salon a few minutes earlier. 40 years. That's a long time to go unnoticed. A long time to be just an ordinary man. I had never known a beautiful woman, and Maria Novella was beautiful. A man doesn't tell such a woman that he's an assistant county assessor or that this Mediterranean cruise took his life savings. It was late. I was alone on deck. And for the first time in my life, I felt that I could be anything I wanted to be. Ah, boy, oh boy. Hello. So this is where you came to hide, Senor Hanson. Oh, Miss Novella. No, I just thought it was stuffy in the dining room, came out on deck to take the air. You are very gallant, Senor. I, too, found Senorita Thurston's little game very trying. Oh? Well, it it wasn't a game so much. As a matter of fact, I get sort of a kick out of guessing who people are or what they do and then... Finding out whether I'm right or wrong. People can be very deceptive. (laughs) You must have discovered that. So often, they're not what they seem. Is that not so? Oh, I don't know. I don't get fooled very often. If you're a good judge of character, and uh, I fancy that I am. Oh, I'm sure that you are. Well, (laughs) thanks very much. Not at all. It is a quality I admire. I am so often wrong about people. I was completely wrong about you. (laughs) Yes, I guess I had you fooled all right. Your work must be fascinating. Oh, it's, it's a job. But importing rare gems, it has the sound of many things. Romance in its true sense. And history. And I should think danger. Oh, I suppose, but as I say, it's a job. Even scouting around the world in search of perfect stones, well, it all becomes routine after a while. I think you are modest, Senor Hensa. I think you know a very great deal that you do not say. (laughs) And I think... I will go right on regarding your life as romantic and dangerous. Well, if it makes you happy. It does. (laughs) (laughs) You see, senor, you prove my point. Oh, how is that? That people are so often not what they seem. Here you are, an importer of rare gems, and you have the appearance of just an ordinary man. (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, well, it's getting chilly I'm afraid I must go in now Oh, so soon? I mean, 
Well, if you're chilly, I could uh, lend you my coat. It is also quite late. Oh. Well, then, may I see you to your cabin? How very nice. We seem to be very much alone. Yes. Not a very lively group aboard, I'd say. And I had thought not a very interesting group. Until tonight. Oh, <laughs> yes, I guess you're right. Here we are. Here? Well, we're practically neighbors. I'm just a few doors down on the other side. I know. Oh, oh, you do? Do you mind that I noticed you? Now then, I'll bet you know I don't mind the least bit. I hope not. Sometimes, Senor Hansel, a woman traveling alone, she's afraid just... Of being alone, she's afraid. Why, now, there's nothing to be afraid of. A small cruise boat like this, not very many people. Oh, I should not trouble you. I talk too much. Oh, you just go right ahead. Why, you're trembling, Miss Novella. I, I'm a foolish woman. I will say good night now, senor. And thank you for being so kind. Are you sure you're all right? Now, if you'd like me to stay with you a while, no, I'd be... No, no, please, you must go. And forget what I have said. Uh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, signorina. It's only Pietro, Mr. Novello. I see. I, uh, I do not mean to frighten the signorina. What were you doing in my cabin? I bring the signorina fresh linens. Eh? <laughs> it's no crime, fresh linens. So late at night, you bring me the linens? Yes, it is late, Pietro. Uh, Pietro has much work in so many cabins. This signorina was not in... <laughs> I did not think that she would mind. Go now, Pietro. This must not happen again. As you wish. <laughs> Pietro would never frighten the signorina. Are you afraid of him, really? I do not know. I'm afraid of many things. Because if you're afraid of Pietro, it's a simple matter to tell the captain, you know. I would not want that. Look, uh, if it'd make you feel better, I'd be glad to come into your cabin with you. Oh, uh, just to look around. Be sure that everything is all right. No. Oh, thank you, but no. I've talked too much. You will please go now, too. I... I'd like to help you, Miss Novella. Not now. We will meet tomorrow. Perhaps then you can help me. My mind was full of Maria Novella, and I didn't sleep very well that night. A beautiful woman was afraid, and she had brought her fears to me. Or rather, she brought them to the man she thought I was. A man whose business was danger and romance, a dealer in rare gems. I knew that night that I would never tell her the truth, that I must somehow come to be this man she thought I was. Your move, Hensel. Huh? Oh, yeah, yes, it is. I'm sorry, Mr. Brilliant. My mind hasn't been on my checkers all afternoon. You would think we were playing chess for great stakes the way you study your moves. I'm not even thinking about them, Mr. Brilliant. I'll concede the game to you. And I will accept, if only because it will be the first game I have won from you in three days. <laughs> you sure you don't mind? Oh, not at all, my friend. Tell me... Have you business in Trapani? Hmm? I asked if you had business in Trapani. We dock in Sicily tonight, you know. No, no, uh, no, this is just a pleasure trip. Oh, that is good. Then you will be able to spend some time with me. Yes, I'd like that. I didn't realize that Trapani was your home. It isn't, but I have many friends there. A particular friend occupies one of the fine old Baroque palaces. He has an exceptional collection of jewels. Oh, so? The man with your knowledge of gems. <laughs> but you are not listening, are you, Hensel? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I was looking for someone. Really? Uh, I guess it's obvious, eh? Uh, but I haven't seen her all day. Do I know her? Oh, Miss Novella? I, I don't place the name, should I? Oh, yes. Uh, last night in the salon, remember when Miss Thurston organized her Guess Who game? Miss Novella was the beautiful dark woman in, in green. Oh, yes, I do remember her now. Very lovely. 
But I don't believe I've seen her today either. And I, I'm sort of concerned about her. Wrapped at her cabin a time or two. She didn't answer. I I think I'll check again. I believe I would if you are worried about her. Yes, I I think I'd better. Excuse me. Oh, and thanks for the game, Mr. Brilliant. I'll see you when we dock, Hensel. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Oh, my, my goodness. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. Mr. Hensel. Didn't see you. Are you hurt? No, 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 Miss Thurston, I'm... I'm... I blew my whistle, but I guess you didn't hear it in time. Well, I, I guess not. <laughs> Doing wind sprints around the deck, getting my land legs in shape. Oh? Start my gym classes every day with wind sprints. Well, don't let me keep you. And remember, we're all playing indications tonight in the salon before we dock. Oh. Oh, oh, uh, hello, Signor Hansen. You were putting fresh linens in my cabin, Pietro? <laughs> fresh water, Signor. They keep you pretty busy with linens and water, don't they? <laughs> Pietro has much work. Eh? <laughs> so many cabins. Eh? I hope I find everything in its place, Pietro. I hope so too, Signor. It's Mr. Hensel. I was wondering if, if... Oh, hello there. Please come in, Senor Hensel. Well, if you're sure you don't mind. I, well, if, frankly, I've been worried about you, Miss Novella. I did not sleep well last night. Toward morning, I took a sedative. I wakened only a short time ago. I was going to send for you. I, is something wrong? I told you I might need your help. This is why I'm frightened, Signor. Oh, my. What a beautiful brooch. The last of my family's treasures, Signor. Mm -hmm. How old it is, I do not know. My grandmother left it to me. I've just come from her funeral in Lisbon. Uh, you say this is why you're frightened? I am a woman alone. Someone may know I have a brooch of great value. Pietro? Perhaps Pietro. I do not know. Miss Novella, why don't you go to the captain? I'm sure he could offer protection until you're ashore. No. I will not call attention to myself by going to the captain. If you will not help me, then... No, but how can I be of help to you? Well, you are used to these things, senor. You often carry gems, do you not? Oh, no. Uh, oh, well, of course, uh, yes, but I, I don't see... I know I can trust you. Take it, please. Uh, take it? Keep it for me. Only until we dock at Traboni. I will feel so much better, so much safer, senor. Y yes, but if something should happen Please, now... it will be safe with you. I do not mean to impose, but... Who else can I turn to? If I cannot trust you... You can trust me, Miss Novella. I'll keep it for you. You are Hensel, ready to go ashore? Oh, Mr. Brilliant, I was looking for someone. You are still looking for the same lady? Huh? Oh, no, not still. Uh, again, I really must find her. I had hoped we could go ashore together. That would be fine, but I promised Miss Novella Excuse that... Excuse me, Senor Hensel. Oh, yes, Pietro. Uh, the Signorina leave this for you. Left it? When? A few minutes ago. <laughs> she has gone ashore, Senor. Gone? But... Surely she must say where... It is a small hotel, senor. The Monte San Giuliano. How did you know that... Arrivederci, senor. You are listening to An Ordinary Man. 
tonight's presentation on Escape. A suspect in a holdup and a known narcotics user cross the path of your night watch during tomorrow night's tour of duty on CBS Radio. Tomorrow and every Friday night on most of these same stations, you're on The Case with Night Watch. A police recorder and actual police in a prowl car, protecting the public from wrongdoings and wrongdoers. Remember, Night Watch, exciting, authentic. Stars Address Listening, tomorrow night. And now, Escape, in the second act of An Ordinary Man. Hotel Monte San Giuliano, please hurry. The urgency of Maria Novello's note saw me through those next minutes. In my confusion, I lost track of Mr. Brilliant. Somehow, I managed to get through customs. What I would have said if they had found the brooch, I do not know. I only knew that I must find Maria Novella and return it to her. She was not registered when I arrived. I took a room and waited. And then... Just a minute. I was afraid I had lost you, Hensel. Oh, uh, come in, Mr. Brilliant. You never lose that look, Hensel. Always when we are together, you are looking for someone else. Yeah, it sure seems that way, doesn't it? You have not found the lady yet, Signorina Novella? No, I haven't. I... Good. Then I will take it, Hensel. You? You? We will take what? Please. We are old friends. We play checkers together. Please do not make me shoot an old friend. I want the brooch. You? You know? Oh, you can puzzle over it when I am gone, Hensel. These are ugly little episodes. We should not prolong them. I am not a brave man, Mr. Brilliant. But I'll tell you Good. one thing. That... Good. Then you will not have to act like one. Now, where is it? In one of your suitcases? No. I, I won't let you. I did not want to oh. do that. Oh, please. But you are such a foolish man. And you waste my time. You force me to find it myself. No, no but you can't. I promise... I promise! But, but I came as soon as I could and I trusted you. I know, I know. How he knew I had the brooch, I don't know. I'm, I'm ashamed, so completely ashamed. Oh, Pietro, he must have known. Perhaps he did, but I am to blame. I should never have given it to you. It was my responsibility. I should never have taken it. But if I hadn't, Mr. Brilliant would have found you and... Well, at least I saved you that. Oh, I... I'm not blaming you. I... Please understand that. I, I'm just so very upset. Well, th oh, this is no good. We'll have to go to the police. Oh, I uh, had not thought of the police. No. No, I do not want the police. But I've already called them. Called as soon as he left. And I must say they were very calm about it. I said I'd have to come there and make a report. No, and no, can... I... I cannot go through that. I have been too long under this strain. Oh. Well, I guess I can handle it myself. If you trust me again. Oh, I trust you. It is only that I am so weary of this. If the police would come here, but... I'll bring them. Now, don't you worry. You just stretch out here. No one will bother you now. There would be no reason. Now. I'll hurry. And don't worry, Miss Novella. I, I just won't rest until I get that brooch back for you. The Trapani police continued to take the whole matter with great calm. I had the feeling that they thought I'd manufactured the entire story. It was well after midnight before I finally persuaded one of them to go back to the hotel with me. I imagine the signorina will be asleep. Yes, I should think so. I think the whole town of Trapani is asleep, including its police force. We like to be sure, signore. Sometimes it takes time to be sure. <laughs> and all that time, Mr. Brilliant was speeding away somewhere, scot-free. It's easy to leave at Trapani. If your Mr. Brilliant was anxious to leave, he could have been gone in minutes. Is that any reason not to try to stop him? Now, here we are. Shh, quietly now. Miss Novella? 
Miss Novella. The room is empty, signore. Well, I don't understand that. She must be here. Is she uh, in the closet, signore? No. But then she must have left a note. I do not see a note. Do you? No. The signorina, she had a room here at the hotel? Yes, I'm sure she did. That must be where she's gone. We will see. Connect me, please, with the room of... Uh, her name? Novella. Maria Novella. The signorina Maria Novella. I will wait. Are they ringing her room? They are checking her number. Oh, that must be where she is. They probably got tired of waiting for us. Just went to her own room. Well, you can't blame her. All that delay. Uh, yes. Yeah. You are sure? Uh-huh. Wasn't she there? The hotel says they have no guest by the name of Maria Novella. No guest? The cigarette? Uh, no. No. It's in your hands. Yeah, I know. I know you don't believe there is any Maria Novello, just like you don't believe anything else I've told you. It's a very fantastic story, signore. You meet the lovely lady on a boat. For no reason you tell her you are an importer of rare jewels. The lady is a fright and she trusts you, gives you a fine old brooch. Then you land at Trapa. The man you play checkers with steals the brooch. Now all three are gone. The lady, the man, the bro. I didn't make it up. I, I couldn't make it up. I, it happened, I tell you. She may be in danger. She may have been kidnapped. I'm sorry. We cannot deal with what may have been. You need a rest, signore. And then tomorrow, you can enjoy Trapani. It's really a very nice place. <laughs> He was right. I needed a rest. But where was Maria Novella? Oh, I should never have gone to the police alone. My mind was full of things I should never have done. If only I had just been content to be an ordinary man. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Senor Henson. Oh, are you all right? I am safe. With friends. Oh, thank heaven. When we came back and you were gone... Oh, I should have left a note, but I was so upset. You understand. Well, I do, but the police don't. I can't understand it, but they don't believe anything I've told them. My friends have talked to me. They think we must go to the police together, you and I. Uh, I think that's the only way. Well, I cannot rest now until we do. Please, this last favor, please come here for me. I was able to find what must have been the only taxi in Trapani at that hour. I gave him the directions Maria Novella gave me, and we wound through a series of narrow streets to what seemed to be the edge of the city. A soft rain began to fall. I told myself it would all be over soon. Come in, Senor Hansel. Well, I'm afraid I'm pretty wet. You are just... Fine. Oh, my... I should have asked that taxi to wait. It's a shame to bother your friends at this time of night. They will not mind. And you have been so kind. Unbelievably kind, Hensel. What? Brilliant. But like most kind people, you are inclined to meddle. Miss Novella? Do what you have to do, Renzo, and be quick about it. But we owe Hensel an explanation. Look at his confusion. Y you, the, the two of you, together? Worse than that, Hensel... Married. I said, be quick about it, Renzo. <laughs> a very impatient girl, Maria, but so beautiful, Hensel, and so helpless. She needs a strong man like you to protect her. You planned it deliberately? But, but why? We needed someone to take the brooch off the boat, you see. Such a simple reason. And you made it so complex for us all. You and Pietro. Pietro? Such an ardent young Latin, Pietro. If he had not detained Maria, she would have met you at the hotel. You would have delivered the brooch to her gladly. As it was, I had to trouble you for it. Now, the police are involved. It's very messy, and so... The brooch. 
isn't hers. There's no dead grandmother in Lisbon. You stole the brooch. Ah, you are thinking, Hensel, but a little late. And she gave it to me because I was supposed to be a gem expert. <laughs> and if the authorities found it on me, there would be no trouble. Is that right? Yeah, that is very wrong. A gem expert? Who would believe that of such an ordinary man? No one. I guess we picked you for yourself alone. You are a nice, ordinary man, though. I hate to tell you. Tell me what? Out in the garden, a very old cistern, the Romans built it. I don't think anyone will ever find you. You uh, are going to kill me? No, such a thought. We are only going to let you die. Not much further, Hensel. You must be very tired. I... I guess I am. The rest will do you good. Hensel! What? Look out! Maria! That's far enough, you! Are you all right, Senor Hensel? Oh. I... I'm much better, thanks. You? You brought the police, Hensel? You? Oh, no, I didn't have anything to do with... Well... Did I, officer? Oh, I, I think so, yes. I got to thinking about your story. It's a very fantastic story. It's so unbelievable. But then I think about you. Such an ordinary man. You could not make up such a story. So, I follow you. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you transcribed An Ordinary Man by Kathleen Height, starring John Daner with Virginia Gregg. Featured in the cast were Edgar Barrier, Anthony Barrett, Ida Reese Marin, and Harry Bartell. Your announcer, Dan Coverley. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are lost in the trackless wild of the Irish moors. Your only companion, the beautiful gypsy woman. And you know that somewhere in the dark behind you, searching every foot of ground for you, is the giant of a man called Choron, who plans to take your girl, and at the same time, take your life. So listen next week when Escape brings you John Daner's story, Benjolina and the Fisherman. Is there a possible connection between a strange ivory monkey and the death of a wealthy oil maker? Mr. Keene believes so and sets out to prove his contention in the case of murder and the ivory monkey, tomorrow night on CBS Radio. Don't miss Mr. Keene at his exciting best tomorrow night on most of these same stations. Where there's gun smoke, there's Western Adventures, Saturday nights on the CBS Radio Network.